as the rebels seized control of large sections of the hive. Simple grey banners bearing the sigil of a broken cog began to fly all over Polis from seized buildings. Og, Junior Lieutenant Carter, and the rest of the Ogrens that only a few hours before had been enjoying their shore leave, were in the midst of a desperate swarm of people trying to push their way up the seemingly endless staircase to the top of the medical facility. Most of the people pressing to the top were trained military personnel with enough discipline not to panic. This helped prevent crowd surges and trampling. It wasn't long before Carter's legs were burning from the relentless climb. The lieutenant was a fit man. He had gone through a rigorous training regimen in order to become an officer, but sprinting up floor after floor of stairs was taking its toll. The Ogrens, especially the wounded ones, were beginning to slow down. Come on, guys, we can do it. The only reason you're not tired is because you got that metal leg. You only have one tired meat leg. We got two. No complaining. The Emperor doesn't like complaining. Dingus grumbled, but continued without further complaint. After what seemed like ages, they finally reached the summit of the hospital. Even Og a veteran who had spent the last five years of his life doing an awful lot of marching, was breathing heavily, with sweat beginning to drip down his face. Panting, Og and his companions pushed open the double doors, leading to the familiar hospital roof that they had seen when they first arrived. Whew, going down was a lot easier than coming back up. <sighs> it's even easier... When the mag lift is working, Lieutenant Carter wiped his brow and looked around. There were at least a hundred wounded PDF and guard soldiers waiting for evac. There was no way that they could be able to get everyone off this roof in time. Carter saw one of the emergency Medicaid personnel opening a large bin that had been locked. They flipped the lid open, and inside were piles of confiscated weapons. The Medicaid worker caught Carter's eyes and gestured to him. You. You're an officer? <sighs> yes. Carter. A junior lieutenant. The worker gestured to the bin. We took any weapons we found on people who were admitted. We didn't want fighting to start in any of the wards. Suppose there's no point in letting them fall into enemy hands. So have at it. They're all yours. Carter nodded and took a deep breath, still feeling he was way over his head, and began barking orders the way he'd seen commissars do so many times before. Line up, lads! Each man gets a rifle and some flak armor. With the Emperor's blessing, we'll get off this platform. But if they come for us, we will not let them slaughter us like grocks. We'll give them a fight they'll never forget! Og and the other Ogren stood off to the side, occasionally taking peeks into the big bin to see if there were any Ogren suitable gear inside. No. This all looked like little and stuff. Og hung his head in disappointment. However, when they reached the bottom of the bin, Og saw something that looked familiar, but a little bit different. Arbites gear! Riot shields and shock batons. Og well remembered his Bulgrin training. Um, Lieutenant Carter, sir? Uh, can we have those? Og pointed a large finger at the bin, hopefully. The other Ogrins were also eagerly eyeing the weapons. Uh, yes, yes, by all means, yes. We need every scrap of protection if we're going to survive this. Ogrins gleefully and eagerly grabbed the shields and the shock batons. They weren't thick, heavy slab shields, and the shock batons seemed very small in the hands of the massive Ogrins. But they were something. Once the weapons were distributed to the most able-bodied soldiers, 
They formed a perimeter around the door in case the rebels decided to renege on their deal. For a while, there was a stream of wounded soldiers who limped through the double doors, but their numbers became fewer and fewer as time passed. Eventually, the flow of soldiers completely dried up, and there were about two hundred of them waiting on the top of the roof. Lieutenant Carter knew there had been many more patients in the wards, Suddenly, two sounds hit Carter's ears nearly simultaneously. The first was the sound of auto and las gun fire down below. He could hear them echoing up the stairway. Something had happened. Fighting had broken out in the wards. Then, the second sound. To his relief, Carter could hear the familiar roar of plasma engines. The evac had arrived. Lieutenant Carter turned and his jaw dropped in awe as he saw three space marines riding sleek jet bikes that rose from beneath the edge of the hospital. White scars, their alabaster armor marked with crimson thunderbolts. Their leader removed his helmet and addressed Lieutenant Carter. Lieutenant, we have come to reclaim this Medicaid facility for the Emperor. Do you have fighting men willing to join us in this glorious task? Lieutenant Carter could only manage a nod and a salute. The Space Marine placed his helmet back upon his head. Good. Then let us spill the blood of the traitor and the heretic and see them driven before us. No man do they call me. My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this episode of Og the Ogren Returns. If you liked what you heard, please leave a like and a comment, so that one day you too might stand side by side with superhuman demigods of death against hordes of traitorous scum. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about ogrens and space marines. If you would like to support me, there are links to my Patreon, my PayPal, and my Teespring down below. Of course, if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Og the Ogren Returns playlist, which should be appearing on screen right now. Or if you really don't know what's going on, you can use the link to the original Og the Ogren series playlist, which will also be linked down below. Thanks again to all of you for listening. No Man, out.